Thank you for coming. Uh, I'm Henry. This is my new book. Uh, I don't know if any of you know the previous books which uh, formed a different series, uh, the Read This If You Want to Take Great Photograph series, but this is something a little bit different. So I'm sort of curious to know if you're familiar with those books and that's why you're interested in this one or this is a completely new book for you all. Do you have the other books? No? Okay, interesting. Yeah. You do. You, d you have some. Okay, good. Do I, is it the middle button? Uh, to the right. Okay, here we go. So I thought I'd spend just like 15 or 20 minutes talking through uh, where the idea for this new book came from because it is sort of linked to the, the previous books in the other series and um, kind of talk through the sort of working process, the, the, the kind of decisions that were made um, and how it kind of ended up being what it is. So. The first uh, thing is like sort of where did the idea come from? So if you do know the previous books in the series, like these ones, these are like very much sort of how-to photography books. So they sort of take you through um, very step-by-step -step kind of uh, techniques of learning about photography and appreciating photography. Um, and in a way, this new book was designed to sort of pick up where those ones left off but present something a little bit different. So it was um, dealing with a different kind of uh, area of photography, so nothing to do with techniques and, and, and how to use your camera and all of those things that obviously people want to know about. But this was much more to do with um, how photographers think and how you can then learn from them and how that might inform what pictures you want to make, <coughs> what pictures you want to make, what sort of like um, approaches you as a photographer might adopt. So whereas with the, uh, these books, it's, it's sort of like spoon feeds you all, this new book is a bit more of you can dip in and out and pick and choose which bits speak to you. Uh, it's not necessarily a book where you would take on every single bit of information that's in there. You would just kind of choose which bits or collect which bits mean something to you and then form your own sort of way of working or philosophy. So that was kind of the, the concept of this book. And then the idea was to use, there's a lot of the ideas in this, is, they're quite complicated ideas. So it was how do we make it um, more accessible and not too stuffy um, so everyone loves a good quote. Uh, photographers like to talk, so some do. Uh, so it was like, well, let's let's base the the structure of the book on quotes, and then unpack really what 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 the meaning is behind these quotes. Because some of them can be quite abstract. So, <coughs> for example, here are quotes. So really, where I started was. Um, through reading a lot of interviews and uh, um, uh, books and uh, websites, a lot of, mostly interviews actually, um, started to pull out interesting little things that photographers have said. Um, and what I really wanted these quotes to cover was like a really broad spectrum of photography. So not, not so much, um, you know, just necessarily linked to fine art or journalism or, 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 or something like that but really kind of take you on a journey through all these different aspects. So from, you know, actually taking pictures, some are related to potentially how you would think about taking pictures. Um, other quotes sort of deal with more of the philosophy of photography or the history of photography or where phot what photography means culturally. So through kind of going uh, through the book, you kind of go through all of these different facets, which was quite important. And then trying to order them was, was a sort of tricky task because you, you can collect a lot of information. Like there's only 50 images in this book or 50 photographers, which means 50 quotes. Um, so which ones do you choose out of like the history of photography and everything and obviously very contemporary work as well? So that's sort of how... I thought about it, but also then you have to juggle things like, well, um, old versus new. You know, like it wasn't just sort of like old, let's just use historical masters. I really wanted lots of contemporary voices in here. Uh, then there was other things to think about, like photography books have this real uh, struggle with like male and female voices. Photography traditionally is a very sort of male-dominated hobby. That's obviously really different now, but 
trying to relate, trying to capture that in books is quite hard because you're dealing with, because uh, male photographers have just been given more of a voice throughout history. So you have to work quite hard to, to balance that. And then sort of genres, uh, you know, you didn't want to make it too fine art, you didn't want to make it too fashion-y. So juggling all of these things together, because it's quite a short book, it can very easily like go one way or the other. So it was a question of always being aware of that. <coughs> now the images was another thing as well, because the, if, if you've had a chance to look at the book, the, it's sort of like everything is starts with the, the quote. And sometimes with the images, like some, some of the quotes can very easily be linked to uh, an image that would sort of illustrate what the photographer's doing, whereas other times, not so much. But what I did want to do is kind of have a, have, a, have a balance in the book of images that obviously some are old and some are very contemporary, but images that are just naturally quite intriguing. I think a lot of the images in these books, in, in this book, they're not instantly ones that you would maybe go, oh, that's so beautiful, or, you know, they require a little bit more um, unpacking. So I really wanted to, in, in, in the sort of same vein as like, I wanted to take readers on a kind of step up from these read this book, something a bit more challenging. I wanted to give them a s source book of imagery that was really presenting kind of different elements of photography as well, something, things that weren't quite as expected. Then the, uh, the other element of the book, so we've got the quotes, the images, and then the interviews. So there's five interviews in the book, and they kind of help to section the book as well, loosely. Uh, and with the interviews, I mean, we, an interesting question that comes up about this book is the subtitle is like how the, what is the subtitle? How the masters see, think, and shoot. And it, it raises the question, well, what is a master? when you're dealing with photography, what does that term mean? It obviously has connotations of Ansel Adams and that whole history. But really for me, like a master is, can be someone working very contemporary, someone who is young, someone who is at the start of their career, someone who has a distinctive voice somewhere, someone whose career is maybe not really like fixed yet. So there's a, with the book, there's a lot of young photographers in there as well um, who, you know, the term master becomes quite subjective. So with the interviews, I wanted to give voice to some of these younger photographers, some of the photographers that, you know, at the start of their career. So Olivia B is a young sort of fine art, fashion photographer. She's only 23. So I thought it'd be quite nice to start the interviews in the book with her because she's someone who's very much at the beginning of her career. And then as the book goes on, sort of almost like get older or more established. So Esther... Um, she's in. She's definitely like a mid-career photographer. She's in her mid-thirties. Um, I studied with her at the Royal College of Art. She's a, a friend of mine, so she's sort of a contemporary of mine. And Alex Soph and Ron Jude, they're you know they're very established and, and well known. And then Brunberg and Shannara, again older, um, um, more sort of we know we know what to expect from them. So. It's a subtle thing in the book, but as the book progresses, you are sort of, these interviews take you through the sort of stages of a photographic career. I did want to end with Iraqi, but um, he didn't want me to interview him. <laughs> well, he, you have to go to his studio in Tokyo. He never leaves his studio now. He's very old. Um, and uh, yeah, he w it was uh, a difficult one for him to pin down, but I thought that would be quite a beautiful thing to end because he is very much at the end of and stages of his, his career. Um, so, the other aspect was the writing. And uh, this, was, this was quite a tricky one to juggle because in, in, the, in the read this books, it's really like my opinion. <laughs> sort of saying, this is how you should take pictures. These are the sorts of pictures you should be interested in. Whereas this one, because you're dealing with the voices of other photographers, I was very aware that, you know, I didn't want to put words in their mouths or, or um, purposely sort of frame their statements in one way or the other. But in the same way, it's sort of unavoidable because um, 
it's quite interesting if you think about what a quote is, if you quote some, someone and what a photograph is, you know, a photograph really is a sort of um, a, a, a visual equiv equivalent to quoting something. So once that is removed from the context of the world, it can kind of shift and move. And when you start to write and talk and think about quotes in language, it's the same sort of thing. You can really shift them in one way or the other depending on what context or how you want to frame them. So with a lot of these quotes, I have to sort of admit that, yeah, I have, <laughs> I think it's probably clear that I have sort of interpreted them in one way or another where some people might read something else from it. So I quite like this book for, when you read it, you're picking and choosing the images and the statements that relate to you, but also, sort of challenging what I'm writing as well and disagreeing with some elements and agreeing with others because really this one is really a sort of less pinned down, it's dealing with the less tangible aspects of photography which are all about or are open for discussion and mean different things to different people. So uh, that's another sort of part of what entered into the writing. So maybe I think the tone is still, I think it's still my style of writing but it's subtly different and uh, maybe maybe potentially a little bit more formal I don't know <laughs> but it's still very accessible it was like how do we how do we how do we get across these really big ideas in a really concise way and really what this book is serving as is like these little tasters into the big ideas and one and at the back of the book there's a, a, a reading list that offers you up um, much more kind of academic photography books that pick up on some of the ideas that we touch on in here um, and then obviously like expand on it much deeper. So this one is like a, a little thing that like helps you get a feel for certain things and hopefully opens your eyes up or mind up to slightly more unusual ways of uh, how pho what photography is. Um, the other element to talk about is the structure. So when, when, um, when I started the book, um, it was had a very clear structure. So as I was collecting these statements, I uh, they naturally sort of formed, they naturally formed into different um, subject matter. Like there was a lot of people talking about the camera, or a lot of people were talking about subject matter, or a lot of people talking about style or technique, or a lot of people talking about what kind of photography means socially and culturally. So you, there was a, this natural way of going, okay, well, these sort of group together and we could section the book like that. Um, and that's kind of how I worked with the book um, for about 65% of it. And then there was this sort of thing where it was just getting a little bit, um, it was starting to get a little bit stale or something. These, when, it's, when you started to group like one photographer talking about a camera and then you turn the page and it's another photographer's opinion about cameras or something, they tended to sort of cancel themselves out or they didn't really work together. So there was a day when I just sort of out of frustration, I suppose, printed it out and threw it up in the air and started picking up the sheets as they landed um, to completely just have this random <laughs> aspect injected into the book. And as soon as I did that, the whole thing really came to life. And these little kind of connections between what so-and-so had said to what so-and-so had said that I hadn't noticed before all started to come out. So really the structure of this book is there's no, there's no s fixed structure. There's a subtle structure that's divided up between the five interviews, but it's less obvious in terms of like, oh, this bit's about subject matter. And it's more about how the different... Um, how the different sort of ideas or opinions of photographers relate to each other, even in a, in a contradictory way. So on some pages, you'll turn the page and one person will be saying exactly the opposite to what the person said before, or they'll kind of build on what the person has said before. So there's now this quite sort of nice but loose journey that the book goes through. So I, although it, I do say it's sort of a book you can dip in and out of, it's, it's worth reading start to finish because you're sort of get more of a feel of the conversation that's happening between these photographers. And then the design of the book is super important, like with, with the previous books as well, because you're dealing with quite complex ideas, um, it's very important that the books are visually very simple 
that the different elements on the page completely, you know, straight away hit you. And through the design, trying to figure out, well, what's the hierarchy of information? Is it, do we want people to be drawn into the image first or the quote? Or is it important that like the photographer's name should come first and then you read what they say? Uh, how about how does the text that I'm writing relate to it? How, how do we don't want it to kind of over, you know, we don't want it to dominate the, what the photographers are saying, but at the same time, the text doesn't want to look sort of incidental. So the design, um, I think we got it, I think we did well with the design because we, we sort of ordered it in, in, a, in a good way where you're hit with the quote, you're hit with this intriguing statement, then the photographer's name, then there's the image there, and then, if you want, you <laughs> can read my text and sort of, it can unpack the ideas that's going on behind it. So I think the spreads are, are, work quite nicely in terms of how the information is getting across without it becoming too complicated. And that's something, even though this is the start of a new entity in terms of a, the photography book for me, there's a connection with the previous Read This series in terms of what you'd come to expect from that sort of book and, and the sort of snackability and digestibility of it. Um, but obviously it has a very distinctive look in itself. And I like the way we embrace these different typefaces. The previous books were very fixed on certain typefaces. In this one, there's lots of different typefaces that sort of give voice to the, to the different um, photographers and things like that. So um, that's my little introduction to the book. But I thought it'd be more interesting to, um, if you have questions about like, the book or the previous books or, or anything that I haven't mentioned here or things you want to learn more about, um, just hit me up with them and I'll, I'll answer them. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> What's your favorite photograph? Uh, yeah, that, that's a good one. Um, favorite I, print, I knew someone was going to ask this. So I printed out some, so it's more like, I think it's like, what's the favorite quotes in a way? Because <laughs> I'm just gonna answer my own question. Uh, the, I really like the ones that are funny. Like I think Man Ray's onto something here when he goes, people ask, what camera do you use? I say, you don't ask a writer what typewriter he uses. I mean, that's a funny thing, but also that carries so much um, you know, what is it with the obsession with cameras, with photography, um, that almost like your, the, the artwork you're creating is all about the significance of the camera, which it has that, but in a way, well, you wouldn't ask other people what kind of tools they're using to quite that extent. I really like um, Lizette, um, Lizette Medell's one about the um, photography is the easiest art, which perhaps makes it the hardest. Because I think that's really true. It's all, it's, it's, photography is cursed in that way of its perception of it's easy, but at the same time to master it and actually say something with it is incredibly hard. So I quite like that one. Um, I also like the, um, <laughs> even though I'm still, I'm still not quite sure what he means by this, but isn't it remarkable how photography is advanced without improving? And I think you could talk about and debate that for, for hours. Um, that was by Charles Sheelan. He said that in the 1940s or 50s in a conversation to Ansel Adams as they were leaving a, uh, in New York, actually, as they were leaving an exhibition of a, this kind of young photographer. And uh, <laughs> I can only imagine that Sheila was sort of feeling a bit disillusioned or maybe this photographer was doing something that was a bit too gimmicky or techniquey because Charles Sheelan's quite a purist. And I think he was probably going, he was probably sort of trying to say something or imply that like, um, you know, photography does advance, it's always advancing, but does that, is that necessarily linked to it like getting better or improving? Do we actually, could you actually, could, some, could an art form advance and actually regress? It's a very interesting but hard to pin down idea that. So I, I like those ones. I also think his image is really beautiful, the, the sort of factory one. To answer the, the image question, I like the, an, the Alvin Langdon Corbett, Coburn image of the kind of double exposure of the eyes. 
um, towards the back of the book. I just think that that's a really creepy, intense image. Um, of course, I like them all. Uh, but in terms of picking the images, I, I wouldn't say... I wouldn't say I, my criteria for picking them was like, do I love the image? It was more, is this image doing justice to what the photographer is trying to communicate through the statement of their, that they're saying? And is it a sort of interesting image? I mean, there's images in there, to be perfectly honest, which might not necessarily connect with me personally, but I think they do well to kind of support the statement. Um, yeah. Yeah, so, so the process was all about finding these statements first. I think without really interesting statements that unpack the deeper um, aspects of photography, the book doesn't work. So it was all about the statements first and then finding the images to support those, yeah. And so, like I said, some of the images that you can instantly see why it relates or why it's relevant and others are a little bit more intriguing in terms of how they might relate um yeah yeah uh any other questions i, have a, um, I can see that you have a book like about instagram but since we were talking to some masters for this book do you happen to know their opinion on how instagram is changed photography and whether they like it or not yeah, I mean, that Instagram book's not technically my book. I, uh, <laughs> I was involved... Uh, no, no, but it, I was involved behind the scenes, but it's not my book. But it's, I know people think it is. Uh, so it doesn't have an author. It's authorless. Yeah. <laughs> well, it was more of a... It was a high-concept book, yeah. Um, so I was involved with it. It's sort of my idea, but it was like... Uh, I don't really want my name on it. Um, <laughs> but uh, what would, so I think, I think Instagram has this, these two sides to it. You know, like Instagram, you have just that fodder that I suppose is 99.9% .9 of Instagram of just people taking pictures of food and live, whatever it is of their view out the train window and, um, and that aspect, which is a whole ph photography language, and Broomberg and Shannara in, in one of the interviews at the back kind of talks about this, about that, the value, the, there's still a currency to those kinds of images. We, we often dismiss it as just fodder, but actually that's a whole, like, you know, it's an, it's an important part that, of photography and culture, cultural significance of photography that can't, we can't just ignore or dismiss as rubbish. Um, but then at the same time, um, there's photographers that use Instagram in a really interesting way, and they're 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 very. It's not just for them a place to put pictures so their friends can see it. It's much more about engaging with the platform itself. And Am Am Amalia Allman is an example uh, of someone in in this book who does that, where she you know she took her Instagram feed and then created a character. I don't know if you know her work. It was called. Um, can you look it up? So excellence it's called excellences and perfection uh, and it's this series and she uh <laughs> no, it's, in the, it's in the book i was gonna ask you to look at and um it's called excellences and perfection it's where she she created this character for herself and wrote like played it out on her instagram account um but the character was like this tragic figure this kind of stereotypical instagram girl who you know becomes obsessed with her own image and she goes through cosmetic surgery and she shares her highs and her lows and her breakup and and it's all entirely scripted and she's using instagram you know the, the way that people comment and interact with those images is the work you know it's part of the work as well um because she's using that platform so i think f as an artist she 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 thinks about instagram very differently she sees it as an opportunity to to make work um, about how we interact with images. So I think I think, and I think in the last five years, more serious fine artists or fine art photographers have kind of I, I kind of feel like they've given in to Instagram and actually quite like it. I think like um, 
I mean, I think Stephen Shaw's Instagram account is an interesting one because he, he's very prolific on Instagram. He uses it as a sort of diary or a dumping ground of his day-to-day -day experiences. He, se he sees it very much as like what his work was, you know, as just recording, you know, in American Surface, just going around recording surfaces and things like that. And he's sort of engaging with Instagram that way. So he's definitely using it as an extension of his work. And if you saw his show at, the, um, at MoMA earlier this year, there was a whole room dedicated to his Instagram feed. Uh, <laughs> whether it's good, or I don't know. He, 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 he's, he's engaging in this debate on Instagram with people who are like going, Stephen, what? I don't understand. He's just like, well, why have you got a problem? I can just do what I want. Uh, which he's got a point. But um, it's definitely like, so he, he's again engaging with the platform rather than it just like a dumping ground for pictures. So yeah. I don't think there's a, a clear cut thing. It seems like Instagram is quite popular though. Yeah. <laughs> so we should probably take notice of it in a serious way. Yeah. Yeah. Any yeah. This kind of piggybacks off of this question. But I was curious and of course it's like your opinion, but what <coughs> makes a photographer a photographer? It's because we're in the age now where so much new technology. Our iPhones become like a device for us to shoot images. Everyone thinks that they're kind of a photographer now. Yeah. I'm just curious in your personal opinion what you think makes someone a photographer. Well, I think it's exactly that. I think if you take pictures on your iPhone, you're a photographer. Like, if you take pictures, you, you are a photographer. Photography has never had when the Kodak box brownie came out and it became very accessible, you know, everyone then became the photographer. It became, and that's going back to that quote about it's the easiest art form which, which makes it the hardest. You know, that, that, that sort of accessibility of photography is, 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 is the wonderful thing about it, but at the same time it's, um, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's not downfall, but it's, it's struggle. But you can't, you know, you are a photographer if you take any kind of image, I suppose. However, you're not necessarily a good photographer or a photographer that's using the medium. You, you're just someone just recording stuff. So, I mean, if that, that sort of answers your question, I suppose. But if your question's actually, how could one justify themselves as a photographer? Like, could I, could I, could I, if, could someone walk into a room and just be like, um, what do you do? And they go, oh, well, I'm a photographer. Oh, great. And they're like, yeah, but purely that's based on that they took a picture today on their iPhone. That would be kind of odd classification of being a photographer. I don't think it's linked to I don't think it's linked to whether you're making money from it. I don't think it's, it's anything to do with that. I think it's more to do with self-awareness. You know, is your work distinctive or is it growing? Is it aware? Are you, do you know where your work fits in the context of this huge thing called photography? Or are you just snapping pictures? So maybe if you're just snapping pictures, you are a photographer because you're doing that, but you're not really a photographer, you know? It's, uh, yeah. And in a way, like, is there any, do we need to even define it? Photography, and this is where the book sort of drifts into, photography is now entering into a period of like, what, what defines a photographer or what defines a photograph is becoming very malleable and very gray. And really the most interesting work in some areas now is where photography and other mediums are all coming together to create this sort of new thing, this new experiential um, work of art that isn't necessarily restricted to, I took it with a camera, it's two dimensional, I hang it on a wall, um, it's involved with a lens somehow, or it captures light. You know, I think photography is sort of moving away from that. The, the, actually an interesting one, do you know that Instagram account 
Is she called Matilda or something where she's a CGI? She, yeah, I follow her. She's. <coughs> yeah, it's she, she's she's called um, beginning with M something, but she's she's basically an invented character. That so they would photograph a scene, but then they would CGI this this um, young girl, you know, into this picture where she's looking at books, and people would interact with this account like as it's a real she's a real person. The CGI thing, it's clearly she's not. She's digitally created. They've balanced her just enough so you're like, she doesn't look quite real. Um, but people like, uh, sort of believe in her identity. And you're like, well, is that photography still or, or not? Because there's, she, you're not, that image isn't done necessarily by capturing light, if that's a definition of what photography is or what a photograph is. But part of the image is, and she is, in the digital realm, she has this sort of existence. She is a thing that exists. Whereas photography traditionally would be, a, you'd only be able to make a picture of something that exists. So that that's a count and that, that sort of move into, you know, total digital make-believe is an interesting thing for photography. That's completely moved away from your question, but <laughs> are they photographers, the people who behind that account? I don't know. They're storytellers. <laughs> yeah. I was a photographer. I've, I've sort of, I mean, I take pictures. <laughs> I, so my background's photography. So I, I got a degree in photography, then I've got an MA in photography, and I um, had, had a sort of active fine art practice where I'd be exhibiting, and um, my media, I was using photography but I was also using video and things like that and then slowly I think my interest in photography moved away from the actual practice of it and more about the sort of writing and thinking about it um, and I think this book reflects that now for me personally I think this book's a real break from like I'm not telling you how to take pictures because in a way I'm not sort of taking pictures anymore so much so but this is much more of a kind of reflection on what the medium is um, so but also, I never ever said that I was a photographer, like, I never thought of myself as a photographer. I would always say that I was a, a sort of fine artist, because I never felt like I was totally... I ne my approach to image making wasn't that I was... My, my starting point was that I want to make a photograph. It was always kind of, what do I want to say, and what's the best medium? to say it with. It just so happened that most of the time it was photography. So I never really felt like I was anchored to it as, a, as my creative practice. Um, yeah. Mm. Image maker, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, given the path that you've described, both your photographer and creating your first books too, creating this one, do you know yet what you want to do next? Um, well, there's a, there's a few, there's a few, <laughs> no, it's weird because you know what, like I wrote that book like more than a year ago now, the publishing process is so slow, you kind of, I feel very like, like I've sort of moved on to my next project in a way with this one because, because you do as a sort of writer, you, you do this book, you, you slog away at it for a year, it takes over your entire life. And then it sort of gets handed over and you don't see it for 10 months. And then it comes out and you're like, oh yeah, I remember that one. Um, so I'm sort of in a way, it's quite nice when it comes out because you, you, you reintroduce yourself to your own work. Um, uh, so, but what's next? So I mean, there's, so I've almost at the end stages of uh, a couple of other books that that um, will be coming out next year, but in a different one. We've done this fun children's book that's coming out next year, um, which is, uh, I won't talk too much about it now because it's, it's, it's a bit sideways, but I think it's a really interesting way to introduce children to quite sophisticated images and ideas, but in a very playful way. And it uses the same kind of work. We do, you know, there's great photographers in that book who have really got on board with the playfulness of it 
where there was where some just weren't willing to because it's really quite an amusing book but it's really dealing with important very important work it takes a specific kind of photographer to be like yeah I'll I'll be in here um, and it was interesting to see which ones were and which ones were like, I don't think so. And there's another element of all of these books is like which photographers, it's not like you just ask for the pictures and they give them to you. You really have to sort of, they have to feel comfortable with the whole thing to, to allow their image to be a part of it. So in a way, the photographers are really forming the identities of these books as well. Um, yeah. Uh, was it your question I'm answering? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, did I answer it? So more books. More books. Yeah, there's more books. Yeah. And um, yeah, I think, I think we're done with the read this books. Um, I don't think we're going to have any more of those. This series is interesting. So there's, a, there's already a kind of read this if you want to be great at drawing and a read this if you want to be a great writer. And that series is expanding now across different um, medium, media, which is great. I'm not writing those. Other writers are doing those. So it's becoming more of a kind of broadening out of like different creative outlets. Um, but I don't think I could probably, it, I mean, between you and me, Lawrence King, the publisher, they, they have often said to me, can we do another one? <laughs> and I could easily say, yeah, let's do another one. And they were like, you know, let's do a read this if you want to, take great pictures of things uh, but to be honest I think probably what as a writer and as I put everything I think I can say into these books and if I was to make another one in that series I'd probably just be giving you the same but different and I sooner this is why I wanted to move on to this book because it this is definitely giving you something more that isn't in those other books so much so I think it's like a, it's like I want to kind of map out this journey, which now is going from children through to people that just want to know what mode to put their camera on, to then people which this book's about, which is really want to kind of engage with photography a little bit deeper and take it a bit more seriously. Yeah. Um, so that's the sort of plan, I suppose. And we'll see how this goes, and there might be like others around this. And yeah. What? What? Yeah. Mm. There's some funny other gift products as well, but they're so not related to this at all, I'm not going to even talk about them. Yeah, you'll see those next year too. Um, any other questions? Yeah. I'm curious, as a photographer, as an artist, how do you deal with the concept of authenticity? Um, do you try to capture something that's authentic? Um, are there ways of capturing things that are authentic and then somebody else captures it and you might say, oh, well, that's not quite authentic, so I don't know. What, what do you mean by authentic? Like? Well, it's probably not easy to um, to come to a good definition of that, and I'm sure plenty of people disagree. And I guess in some way I'm asking if you have your own take on authenticity. Um... Do I are you like asking it in a way that's like like is Photoshop good or bad, or is it like is it is your is the authenticity of your sort of motivation or voice the the authentic part of the work? Because you can certainly look at some people's work, I and mean, this is, uh, so many contemporary artists and photographers are guilty of this today, just because the the thing that is the art world has become this huge commodity and the pressure that is put on artists by galleries to just produce. Um, and the kind of narcissistic element of like, wow, I can, make, I can make serious money now being an artist or a photographer. I think with work like that or that situation or that idea of authenticity, I think it's quite easy to spot the people who aren't quite as, as, as genuinely it, what their motivations might be, whether it's just like, let's just churn out another series, or this done, this did well, so let's just do another. There's that, and when that's fine if you're operating in the commercial area, but if you're working operating in the fine art area, suddenly the work can feel a little bit hollow or or, or shallow, 
So there's that. So, so to answer that part of your question, I think as a as an image maker, you just have to be making work that you really feel is important to make for you, and it, it means something to you. And I think that's the hardest part of the process of learning how to be an image maker or any kind of creative is actually finding that thing that you feel you want to say. It's really hard to, to, to actually get to that that kind of awareness, that and that takes years. Um, yeah, but then the kind of authenticity of like, is this image truthful? Well, Ron Jude in this talks about, um, he makes a very interesting point in one of the interviews about how I asked him, do you ever manipulate your scenes that you encounter? They feel very sort of like he's just walked around a corner and seen something. And he was just like, well, yes, I do. He said, normally the best pictures are the ones that I don't, but I do. But he said, my work's not making any claims on, on like truth. It's not operating in that kind of area of photography. So I don't have a problem with manipulating a scene in a certain way for the sake of like a, a good picture or to reinforce what I want to say as an artist. Whereas like a photojournalist would get into very difficult water if they were manipulating their images through either actual kind of physical things of what's in front of them or through Photoshop, because that's where authenticity is the sort of real, like without that, then the, the image is nothing. Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions? Is this kind of like more of a general artist question? Like, I think this has been coming up a lot for me at my work. Is can you separate the art and the artist? And I just like was curious about your opinion. I think having done this book, it's it was really clear that the personalities of artists come through in their work. I think it's really a hard thing, and that goes back to that authenticity question. It's a hard thing to separate, I think, sometimes. And with a lot of these statements that I chose in these books, part of it was like, with some of them, if you know the art, the, the photographer or, you know, or whatever, you can sort of hear them saying it. You're just like, this is such a, a soul lighter thing to say or something. Um, so I think that, I think that really successful art in a way is that identity of the artist or their personality is somehow in the work, whether it's like a conscious thing or it just happens that way, I think it's something you can't really separate out. But that does, that's not to say that I think you necessarily need to understand who the artist is to really appreciate their work. I think it can be nice sometimes to be told the stories about Vincent van Gogh, say, but do we need to know the ins and outs of his personal life or his things to, to kind of appreciate the work? Maybe you do, maybe you don't. Um, yeah, but I think, I think naturally your work is informed by who you are. And I think if it's not, there's a real problem somewhere. Yeah, and that's about finding the voice. You can make work, you, you can make work that is good, but really it's not the sort of work you should be making in a, it, like you haven't quite found that niche. I, I think there's a really nice photography book out. It came out years ago. It's called like pictures I, something like pictures I wish I'd taken or pictures, and it's about photographers. I think they talk about a picture that they've taken which really doesn't fit in with their body of work, but they still like it. And it's all, almost like someone else's work. Um, and that's quite an interesting relationship to your own image. It's like, well, I know this isn't really my picture, but I like it, something. Mm. I can't remember what that book's called. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. <laughs> Pictures I'd never, say, yeah. Anyway, um, anything else? <laughs> well, I think we're done then. Yeah, well, thank you again for coming. I hope you do enjoy this new book. Let me know. These are my emails, so yeah, I'd be very curious. Drop me an email if you, when you read it and tell me what you, what you think, and uh, yeah. And if this is your first book by me, uh, then you might, like the other ones too, <laughs> so, so give them a go.
All right. Thank you, everyone. Cheers.